Hello, 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 hello. We are home. Finally, time in the garage. And um, it's gonna be a little bit of a different uh, thing today. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I have decided that uh, if I, if, if we go ahead with this machine, I am, when I strip the engine out, I am going to engrave all the heads just like uh, I don't know you can see the Mexican style uh, motorcycles when they engrave everything with filigree so um, I am going to engrave all the engine cases so I've been doing a bit of research into the engraving and uh, the machinery is uh, a bit expensive so uh, I decided to uh, make my own uh, let's see how that goes I have uh, bought a uh, little 12 volt air compressor, which was discounted, which was beautiful. We have uh, some power. I have ordered a uh, digital uh, controller. It has a little start button. And then we have a little potentiometer to uh, turn the voltage up so I can adjust the speed of the compressor. And I bought a little hand tool, a little hammer tool for engraving. So uh, I'm going to um, modify this and see how um, I can make it work. Um, I have watched some videos what the guys do, so um, let's see <laughs> what happens. Hopefully it works. You saw in my previous videos my ball sacks. <laughs> uh, they'll just... Uh, be at the moment just hanging here and where should we put another ball sack? let's do it there uh, I might put them on a bike later on but um, let's get to this uh, compressor and take it apart I don't know if uh, you know how the compressors work uh, there is a piston here and usually in the piston is a little valve or reed valve so when uh, it's a one direction valve so when the piston retracts it allows the air go through and uh, fill the chamber and then when the pistons go up um, against the head it presses the air into the system so and then uh, it just repeats 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 so what the guys do is that you glue that valve shut and uh, instead of constant pumping now you just have a uh, the air goes pushed into the system and pulls back out, pushed and pulled, instead of just pressurizing the system. So um, that's how you move this hammer. So um, there is a little piston inside, so it just moves with the air up and down, up and down, which creates the little punch uh, movement you need for engraving. So that's the theory. I haven't opened it yet, so um, let's just get to it and see what we have inside. This piston, by the looks of it, doesn't have a um, valves inside, but they are here. I thought they were one way, but um, these valves must allow air to come inside the space, and then these other valves allow the air to go out through the hose in where you need it to press the air. Uh, let me see if I can uh, jiggle this out. <laughs> Wait a second, I'll put this back in the stand. Uh, We have the valves one way. Ah, oh, this. So the air must enter through here. Air must come through the hole through the top. Through these two holes. Enter into the piston and then through these other holes. Air comes out into the chamber. So I think what we need to do is to fully remove 
these two valves so the air is able to come free from the piston chamber and uh, out of the hose and I need to block off these two permanently so there is no um, no air gets inside and that way we have a push-pull system so um, that's the theory let's do it the valves are removed from both ends these two holes for the intake I have blocked off with the bondo with the needed so uh, they can seal and uh, don't allow any air to come through and this one will allow air to come back and forth back and forth which is cool we have uh, the piston head piston there thing it's all good uh, we can keep that on then put the seals back on um, and assemble the thing Compressor is doctored, um, valves are removed and blocked off, so that should just uh, push the air out and pull the air back in, push the air, air out, pull the back in. So um, that's the theory. We just need to cut our cables, wire them to the controller and then uh, figure out how to some kind of connection for different hose sitting. Um, that's the next thing. So uh, let's get chopping wires. Hey, put myself in a little mission too. Uh, in the meantime, I have built a little board. So I have a display, power button, and a little potentiometer to uh, adjust the voltage, which is cool. And. Um, Clever me, I have snipped um, off the positive and negative to this and then I realized they are not color coded <laughs> so I don't know which one is positive and which one is negative so I have um, take, taken the back of it so I can find the cables and I'm just gonna do a continuity test to find out <laughs> which which of the cables is the the positive so I can um, <laughs> so I can mark it up uh, I was clever <laughs> don't know if it's gonna make much of a difference but might as well might as well keep it tight uh, okay so we are looking at a um, which way is this going? It's my cable there. Does it matter? I don't know. So this one is that one. And that one must be... If this come this way. So everything is there is red. So I better mark up. Here we go. I knew I have a red electrical tape for some reason I could put a heat shrink over it yeah. ah. okay let's double check it this is my positive Ding. yep Okay, problem solved, <laughs> but I didn't have to undo everything, the whole compressor again, but hey, you win some, you lose some, at least we can rectify it, don't we? Alright, I'll put it together and then figure out how to connect all the stuff. It all 
done. That's done. Uh, valves are removed. Uh, power has been resoldered. I have soldered the controller. Uh, put it in a little box. I have uh, chopped off the fuse from the end and I put it to the start so we have some kind of protection and at the moment I don't have a proper power supply just yet if this all works I'll buy one but they are quite expensive so at the moment I'm just gonna wing it with my uh, CTEC so you can set it to a um, to supply and it's gonna just Put a continuous output out and then I'll just put power there, power there. Oh look. Yeah. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> okay. Never mind. That's from zero to hundred, that's cool. At the moment I have a power switched off there, so that's why it doesn't go. Um, let's put it to 50% and turn the machine on. Haha! <laughs> Okay, so that kind of works. With uh, I have to check the motor for voltage and amps and stuff. I think and uh, see what kind of power supply I need. The CTEC is not cutting it. I don't think there is enough amps or or whatnot. So uh, we'll have to uh, figure that out. I'll, uh, I might take the whole thing apart and see what's actually stamped on a motor. But as you could see, the um, the motor, the compressor is definitely pushing and pulling the air with every stroke. So um, I think that's uh, pretty good for starters. And then we have. Um, this equipment I'll have to attach this hose to uh, the end up here I'll just maybe take it find a different connection and then if you take this apart this is first time I'm taking it apart so uh, oh yeah it's just double threaded tube with a little hand piece and inside should be a little hammer on a spring. So there is a O-ring at the end. And we have a, oh, just, um, this is a type of hammer with a, which goes up and down. I'm pretty sure there is a spring. So um, that's how it works in theory. There's a different type of hammer has been supplied. Oh, no, it's not a hammer, it's a uh, extra piece. Oh, look. <laughs> extra piece to go on the inside here. Well, this is what the little hammer looks like. I am still waiting for uh, the graver bits. And you put your chisel in there, your graver, and just go around all the metal bits. So um, yeah, that's for now done. I'll have to figure out the hose connections and uh, when the power supply and when the gravers arrive. I can give it a test. Okay, so we have everything sorted for now. Um, 
and we'll see when the rest of the parts arrive and uh, then I can try to engrave some metal. Okay, okay, so here is a little update. Um, I've forgotten that um, in a box was a hose with a nice fitting to go over it and I had a small little connector to uh, do your tires. So um, I just used what I got uh, from my engineering air conditioning times I still had a um, piece of uh, little rubber hoses uh, they're just kicking about so I used that I ground it off the connector and uh, put the piece of hose there so now it's all connected to um, the, the hand piece so um, yeah I'm, uh, how we have power on it's 69% <laughs> let's see what happens I'm just gonna turn it on <laughs> it did work but we don't have any I the power is not enough the supply is not enough Hmm. It works. I can hear the you can hear the hammer in there. But we just not enough have a, we don't have enough power to actually run this. So um, I already checked. It's a um, it's a 12 volt uh, maximum voltage 14, but it's 45 amp draw. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, this CTEC is 7 amps. So, if the motor takes 40 amps to run, obviously the CTEC, poor little fella, is not, not going to uh, survive super well. We need to get a proper hardcore power supply on this, and um, we will be good to go. That's exciting! That's exciting. We might have an engraving, a cheaper engraving machine. The, the box, uh, the compressor cost me $110. It's New Zealand money. Um, it was discounted by 50% from super cheap autos. I bought the handpiece actually from AliExpress for 30 bucks. And uh, I got the controller from Amazon for another 20 bucks I think so uh, instead of spending 10 grand on an engraving set it cost me well, 150 160 dollars all up so far uh, plus I spent I think 40 bucks on uh, on the engraving bits they are just from Amazon uh, I just want to see what they like and if it's gonna work if this is gonna work then I'll um, I'll maybe spend better money on getting a proper set with a sharpening kit so um, um, I can start practicing. But so far, um, so far so good. Hello, hello, hello. It feels forever. Many moons ago I have started working on this engraving machine and now we are back. Finally, I have this, which is nothing but the power supply simple little thing this one is rated to uh, 12 volts up to 50 amps so uh, since the uh, compressor uh, has a 60 amp fuse I'm pretty sure I'll be fine and um, yeah, there's my compressor. Also, this arrived ages ago. Uh, little tips and little bits for engraving. Uh, I got them for about 20 bucks from AliExpress. Um, let's see how we go. There's my hose, there's my engraver, and there's my power uh, compressor with the controller. Okay, 
so I'll just set it there control we have here cables ready with the fuse and I'll just uh, I think over here hiding I have some cable it's quite thin uh, I might rewire it to the sticker wire just in case if it's uh, too much current so I don't burn the wire sometimes it's handy but then I use the same wire actually here so do I worry nah, let's don't worry let's just uh, keep it as is and uh, see what the where it gets us Nothing's ever as simple. So now this works. And it pushes 12 volts exactly. Why is it not working when I connect it? Polarity is different. Polarity, this one is negative. Sometimes plus and minus is required. Okay. Take number two. Power on. Units running. We have on. Okay, we have power going. Hundred. It's a bill of 45, it's pushing it. Something's uh, funky here because the hammer is not moving. We have some air leak in here, I'm not sure. Either this is out of place or uh, power supply could be still bigger. But let me try, I'm gonna... <laughs> Do this trial, I have my welding pieces of aluminium I was playing with. Uh, we have, let me rearrange this, our engraver hose, our engraver bit. And uh, let's just see if it'll do something. Let's give it a try. Well, that's a fail. It's somewhat working. But it's definitely not engraving. All this stuff and waiting and I don't know what for. We're waiting for nothing, I don't know whether the tips are wrong. I have to do more research what to do with this. Or um, if there is not enough pressure from the compressor, I'm not sure. It's definitely not engraving the way I have imagined it. It's gouging some holes in there. Man, I don't know. Sometimes you wanna do something cheaper because the things are expensive. And then uh, you plod and plod and plod and do things and maybe at the end you buy the real thing anyway because what you make up is shit. <laughs> and doesn't matter what point you get it, it never works. The bits are screwed up, the handle is screwed up, power supply and compressor are okay, I think. It's just this end, I think. So, uh, maybe what I'll need to do is just chop that hose up 
make it much shorter and give it another try. See if the, the hammer is gonna actually be more powerful. Here is the thing. My theory might be right. Um, but if I turn this on, and if I plug this in, by the end it gets to here, Nothing. So, uh, sometimes doing drastic things like cutting hoses is a bit scary, but I don't think we can get away with it today. Test number two or three or four. Oh, how many tests have we done? So no more hoses, we have short length here. Good. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah! Much more powerful. I don't know to be honest, um, maybe my tips are not great, but it's not working, so either these little bits are pretty crap and do nothing, or uh, maybe that, well, it's definitely engraving, I don't know if you can see that. But I think the angle of this is wrong. It keeps digging in, so uh, there was this little pass down here, this one it was kind of nice, but I was almost flush with the uh, piece of metal. So I guess we might get in close, shorter hose definitely helps, well, I need to dial it in properly because if I want to be engraving the whole engine case it's not gonna be a five minute thing. If I can get the engraving going and I can uh, engrave the heads and the side covers, that would be pretty cool. Well, good morning. Um, I had a good night's sleep and then my sleep, as uh, my brain works, is I have turned on my uh, air conditioning engineering background and I was thinking more about the pressures in the systems in the pneumatic systems and I thought um, that uh, where else I have restrictions uh, in movement of the air. We have chopped up the hose and uh, shortened that up and that improved hugely the performance of the engraver. And then I thought, oh, do you remember what uh, the piston and the valve things looked like? And there was that uh, chunk of metal with uh, two holes when the reed valves were, which I removed. One part of reed valves I have uh, uh, closed and I left two open. But all that air from that piston has to move through those tiny little five millimeter holes. So that got me thinking, that's a huge restriction for the, for the piston. So um, what if I either try to remove that piece of metal? I don't know, it seems like there is a collar with seals, if I remember correctly. And um, if that's not the case, I'll just drill out or chop a hole out of it to open it all up. Um, but I can, you know, <laughs> already gone too far, so I uh, might give it a go. a one little cutout so now I can discard it and if I put the seal back on now the air has absolutely no restrictions coming up and over the piston so um, in theory we should be um, pretty good going so if this doesn't help then uh, 
I don't know what will. I'm just putting the, the seal back on here. We got it down. Let's give it a try. Uh, we'll find out pretty soon whether um, it's working. I'm not gonna do that just yet to see what kind of pressure we have out of there. I'll uh, turn the power on. And we have leaks all around here. I have noticed also this hole down there, which obviously makes the air to suck from underneath this cover through the hole, through the system, to the piston and out. But that might cause me a problem because I don't want that. I just want air to go into the hole in and out, in and out. So if the air is going able to go up and down, it's gonna disrupt my pressure. So let's try this. I'm going to uh, bondo this up, close it up, and then I'll run it again. Okay, another test. Let's try. All right, that has a quite bit of a more push, I'd say. Um, let's plug this in. Get my hammer in the hand, and let's try to get it away. I don't think it's gonna work as I expect, but um, we're moving closer to what I want. Well, it definitely uh, hammers up and down as you can see the jumping. Whether it's engraving, not so much. It definitely works better than before, but I don't know whether uh, the chisel is off or uh, yeah, not sure how it is supposed to work. <laughs> well, is this successful? I don't know. I think it works better. I don't know how it works. I don't know how to test it. I don't know uh, what's wrong with my technique. Or is it my chisels and the gravers are um, not right? I'm not sure. Uh, what I can do is to uh, get a one good graver and see if that's gonna make a difference. Because when you watch videos how people engrave, it seems to be cutting nice and smooth and uh, uh, this one just digs in. So I'm pretty sure that uh, it's either my technique is pretty shit, which is highly likely, or um, my little gravers are wrong. So um, if you can point me to a direction uh, what I'm doing wrong, would be great. I think my setup just need tidying up and it's gonna be okay. Um, just need to finalize these things. I thought that changing the compressor will uh, help out right now. It's gonna be fine, but um, uh, that didn't help. So uh, we'll see. Um, if you can help me out, it would be great. Uh, write down in the comments what, um, what I'm doing wrong or if you can suggest a solution, uh, what to buy or um, what to do with, uh, with my little setup. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to engrave this stuff and um, we'll just need to get there. So um, thanks again for watching. This was a bit of a drawn up episode and uh, maybe not particularly bike related, but um, it is going to be bike related. So um, um, yeah, thank you for your help. I'll uh, see you in the next one. See you later.